Hey, we just went to the cafe because we were super hungry. Now this is called the Stencil House and they only have guided tours. I don't know. Wow, it's a really cool house. I wish we could go in. Let's, we can't? Well, it's a guided tour place. Oh no, this is the Prentice House. Oh, guided tours, 1 p.m. and 3 daily. Well, I'll try to open the door. Let's yeah. see if we can go in. You never know. Nope. Shucks. Half hour. Half hour they'll be doing a tour? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll come back. Oh, beautiful gardens. Oh. I guess there's one on that side too. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Smells good. So we're in a big rush through the through the park now because we have about what do we have? Two hours left. <laughs> I know. It's like move, move, move. And we've hardly seen anything. Now you can go in here for two days. Get a picture of it. Get a picture of what? Motivation. Look at this beautiful garden. Hokey toots. It's all purple. Hey, Tom, can we make a garden like this at our house? We could. This is nice. He's laughing at me telling Joe what I want, and then he said, We could. Well, but then. Do you want it's going to be the rest of the sentence? But. Yeah. I sense a but. Yeah. Look at this loop. Something else has to give. Okay, we're headed over to the lighthouse. We're just gonna blow the rest of the people away and go. I have this on a gimbal that needs an app to control it. And I haven't set up the app. And so if there's a little bit of funky stuff here, that's why this is the lighthouse. And how cute is that lighthouse? Oh man, I wonder if we can go in there. It's kind of interesting because suddenly we're coming across some things that are closed um, and some things that do guided tours only. So I'm walking uphill. Oh, there's a beautiful house here too. <gasps> Oh, I want to go in that house. Look at this house. Preservation and progress. Building open. Oh, good. Colchester Reef Lighthouse. Influence of Ralph Nading Hill. A writer. That is so cute. And look, we can get into this house. These are Tom's favorite rose bushes that you find at the ocean. Here we go. Oh, doesn't it smell good here? Wow. Hello. Ticonderoga ship. Oh, they have pop. They have pop art in here. <laughs> no. It's not really. And that's staff only. Okay, to the house we go.
Nothing here to see, boys. <laughs> Nothing to see. Nothing, Nothing to here. see. Can we decide for ourselves? Okay. <laughs> you can. There really isn't anything there to see. <laughs> They'd, they'd find something just for the sake of we said yeah oh look there's an electric outlet isn't yeah. that cool i wonder how they did that oh let me think Rossi about that for 10 minutes yeah <laughs> oh look they built a shelf in the wall <laughs> there's someone there <laughs> see yeah. we were there like 10 seconds i know this is pretty cool Columns, the Roman columns. This is beautiful. Oh, you know, I love the primitive homes, but then when I get to something like this, I get a little bit um, itchy about this too. Like, ooh, this would be nice with those floor to ceiling windows and and wicker chairs on the porch. And yes, we did. Oh, <laughs> I guess we have to walk in the grass. Nope, we're gonna do it, Julie. I don't think there'll be ticks in this grass. Avoiding ticks. Well, goodness, I feel like we've walked around the whole house. <laughs> this is the house with no front door. <laughs> uh, they're either in there or they're going to do the same thing we did. Staff yes, only. There is no front door. Entrance around front, it says. Are they still in the house or are they walking around this house? Goodness. It says building open. That's probably the front door. The right there. We walked right past it. Okay, here we go. No flash photography. Oh, that doesn't mean no, no uh, video. Thank you. This is so pretty. This is the Electra Havemeyer Webb Memorial Building. It's a mouthful. Shelburne's Museum world-renowned collection of French Impressionist masterpieces is exhibited in the Electra Havemeyer Webb Memorial Building. And I am so excited being that art major that I am. The interior of this building is painstakingly recreated of the six rooms from Mrs. Webb's 1930s Park Avenue apartment in New York City. And this does look like a Park Avenue apartment in New York City full of great art. The structure is a Greek revival design based on a house in Orwell, Vermont that Mrs. Webb admired. After her death in 1960, her children built the gallery to fulfill her wish that her impressionist paintings and decorative arts come to the museum. The building was completed in 1967. While other buildings on the museum campus provide insight into Mrs. Webb's mature interests as a collector, the Electra Havemeyer Webb Memorial Building tells something of the forces that influenced her upbringing and personal life. The rooms are a formal combination of English, European, and Asian furniture and decorative objects, as well as high style American pieces, including an elegantly carved suite of furniture, by Louis Comfort Tiffany, who lived from 1848 to 1933. So we're gonna tour this house. It's beautiful, it's amazing, but I bet you'd kinda like to know who Electra is because she actually is the brains behind this venture at Shelburne Museum. So let's hear about her. 
This museum was founded in 1947 by Electra. The museum is known for its diverse and extensive collections of American art, design, and folk artifacts. It encompasses over 45 acres and features various historic buildings and exhibition spaces, which we have been working through. Electra Havemeyer Webb lived from 1888 to 1960 and was an avid art collector and philanthropist. She was the daughter of Henry O. Havemeyer and Louisine Havemeyer, who were prominent art collectors and benefactors as well. Electra's passion for preserving and displaying American art and artifacts led to the establishment of the Shelburne Museum. The museum's collections include fine art, folk art, textiles, decorative arts, and artifacts from various periods of American history. Some of the highlights of Shelburne's museum exhibits included paintings by American artists such as Andrew Wyeth and Winslow Homer, as well as an extensive collection of folk art and historic objects. So this is her house, a replica of her New York apartment with her extensive art collection added. And let's take a look. It's amazing. Cookie, this Monet um, is the first Impressionist painting that was brought to this country. Really? So you see it in art history books. And okay. I know, and yeah. Did Amsterdam. Oh, this was okay. it. oh, wow. Wow. Huh. I can almost hear the traffic beneath me on Park Avenue as I prepare to go to a show. It just feels so New York. Okay, this next picture is going to blow you away. This is a painting by Mary Cassant, and this is actually of Electra when she was a little girl with her mother, Louisine. Now, this is amazing because her mother was an avid art collector, and as you look around at the art, she was alive when these artists were painting their pictures, and I'm sure they weren't worth half of what they are now. Now, I might also want to tell you that those colorful beach ball-y things you see around there are all part of a pop art collection that basically was going on in the whole museum when we were there. And in various places, these big bounce-up things would appear and it looks very ill-suited in this home. Now, it's kind of amazing that amidst this beautiful, priceless art, they threw these beach bully things in. Uh, that would all go into a conversation. I felt more like I was going to be in the MoMA than in a fine art home. But I guess in New York City, you would see both. And even though it is quite ill-suited in this home of beautiful architectural elements, um, I guess they were trying to instill a conversation. It's just a conversation I feel like I didn't need. <laughs> we look at impressionistic paintings right now and it almost feels like they were painted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But the truth is that the Havemeyers, when they were collecting these, it was during the 1800s, late 1800s, when they were actually painted. So think about Claude Monet painting something, having it exhibited, and the Havemeyers purchasing it, hanging it in their New York apartment, and their daughter, Electra, inheriting these paintings, which now are very priceless. To get a Monet, to get a Mary Cassatt, right now there would be almost no way especially that your even rich average person could acquire such a thing. So to acquire these paintings back then was really good investing.
something too that you would see amongst art collectors, especially in New York City. You wouldn't have a problem putting up your modern art next to your uh, maybe more impressionistic paintings. Uh, there, it's, it's all art. And so the mixture of putting that all together, except for those blobs, is actually quite beautiful. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous room. She was telling us that there were Tiffany silverware in there, and we're going to take a look at that now. There's a great collection of antique chairs. I mean, look at this. It's amazing. Maybe some of you know what period that would be in, but juxtapositioned with all of the art. And, you know, I don't know who did this painting. It's against a wall of either muraling or wallpaper, which again is something, it's a very interesting choice for an interior design in a home. Also look at the shutters on the windows for privacy, for sound, definitely for the looks of it. This room tends to have just a great collection of different artists featured in it. But again, all of these paintings were painted in the late 1800s. So the Havemeyers were invested in the art world and art collectors and I think that's pretty cool. Also here is some more Tiffany spoons. Poor Julie is waiting for me because I'm kind of enamored with this home and I didn't really think that I would be <laughs> and I had no idea that this art collection was so amazing. That guide was very friendly and very nice and I wasn't really sure that I was allowed to um, video in there but they were gracious and let me video in all the exhibits which I found to be a really nice thing. This is just a gorgeous paneled room, a small room off the side of the hallway. Look at the art, the paintings on the wall. This is, this is so beautifully done. And again, this is a complete replica of the apartment that she had in Park Avenue. This room is, I would say this was everybody's favorite. This was a library. And look at that beach ball by the fireplace. This was a beautiful library with all these antique books and, uh, Look at the archways, the architectural details, the grain of the wood, a very masculinely decorated room. More beach paraphernalia. But I find this with, with really great designers. They are not afraid to mix a bunch of styles and come up with their own design. So a lot of you, you talk to me about, well, you know, I'm not all primitive. I'm kind of eclectic. I have things from all different periods of my life that I really value. And I think for the most part, that's the beauty of design is putting together your own home in your own style with the things you love now for some of us we have gone um, very strictly primitive in our decorating style to the point of hiding anything that doesn't quite fit right now i'm sitting in an office that definitely is more boho 
than the rest of my home, but I can close the door and we don't have to see that room. However, I enjoy this design and I enjoy sitting in here. So I think that this is just a good time to remind everybody that you don't have to be stuck on a certain style or on a certain design. I know that there's a lot of fear, especially among people in the primitive world, that primitive goods are going to go by the wayside since a lot of stores have closed. Um, Modern Farmhouse has kind of taken over a lot of that. And we can thank Joanna Gaines for that, of course. But I do think that these antiques and this primitive style is always going to be there for some people, especially those people who continue to purchase primitive and historical homes like I have. And there will always be a market for that. So we don't have to be worried about that going away. I think there's a lot of worry and fear about this going away, but the truth is that a lot of these primitives are antiques and they're not going anywhere. They're worth money. These paintings, these portraits are actually of the Havemeyers. So Mr. and Mrs. Havemeyer, uh, Electra's parents. Those were done for them. And at the top of the stairs here, we're going to look at an amazing portrait. founders of this museum. Oh. This lady being a Vanderbilt, when she married this gentleman over here with a newspaper who's Dr. W. Oh. Seward Webb, they built Shulman Farms oh, they so, uh, and lived there 75% of the time during the year. That was kind of unheard of for wealthy people to live in Vermont, but they did. <laughs> and no, I mean, truly, people thought they were crazy. They I'm also sure. had a home in, uh, little, you know, home in New York City. And that's where this little boy, when he grew up, met Electra, our founder, and she came up to Vermont to meet his parents, and they fell in love with Vermont. And eventually, this is why the museum is here. Wow! Is that the same little boy that we had a picture of in the Adirondack Lodge? Or not? No, that's Vanderbilt Webb. That was his brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's the same family. Okay. Her okay. son. Yeah. Okay, he, she okay. Had, uh, Frederica Vanderbilt, James Watson, I think three children. So. Oh, okay. Wow. So that tour, dear? Yeah. Six minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's. So then I was informed that we are only six minutes out of seeing those two old primitive homes that I really wanted to see. So we're going to have to take a quick peek at this beautiful home and these gorgeous bedrooms up here. And then we're gonna be running over to the museum. Now you'll notice there's Degas in here. I mean, wow.
portraits in this house all mean something to the people. And as we went into the hallway, I stumbled upon a portrait that looked just like the style of John Singer Sargent. And for those of you who are in New England and you've been to the MFA, there's a lot of John Singer Sargent portraits there. So I started studying this portrait and the woman in the hallway noticed it and came up to inform me that it was actually painted by John Singer Sargent's teacher. So that's why the style of it looked so much like John Singer Sargent. And I think that's amazing. I guess this is really a glimpse into the lifestyles of the rich and famous in New York City in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and it's pretty fascinating. I am still fascinated by all the artwork, but look at the furniture collection. Look at the architecture, the large windows. So for those of you primitive lovers, which I know there are many, we actually are going into two very old primitive homes. They're amazing. I learned something about one of the chairs that I own because it was in that home. And the stenciling was some of the most beautiful artwork. So there are a lot more homes to come on this tour of Shelburne Museum. If you're anywhere near Shelburne, Vermont, that's by Burlington, you might want to check it out because it's pretty amazing.